Hm? Ja, sehr kurz. Okay, now we are fine. Uh, so when you have y equals x squared plus z squared means your uh, axis or your uh, parabolic is in the direction of the y and that's just really plane of y equals so which is a parallel to the xz plane so y equals a constant is parallel to the xz plane this is what we have learned in very first uh, chapter of this course so i'm going to uh, make the graph over here so to see which way is better. So what we said is for the parabola, the axis is just going to be the y-axis because of the way the formula is. Formula is y equals x squared plus z squared, whatever has the first degree, uh, means just the, really that's the axis of uh, your, your, your three dimension or the surface. And then the other one is just uh, the plane of, uh, uh, y equals 4. So if I say y equals 4 is sitting over here, this is the plane of y equals 4. Actually, I need that plane of y equals 4. If I don't put the y equals 4, that's just probably this is stretching all the way to the infinity, but that's what I, uh, I, I don't know how to solve. So I want to have a limited uh, uh, surface. So it means I need to cut my probably somewhere here is as y equals 4. Okay. So this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and this is the z-axis. So you want to set the limits of integration in three-dimensional to get this evaluation thing that is given in this problem, okay? So then you have really three different uh, ways or projection that you can do. So either you can project it, I'm going to make this shadow, but later I'm going to really erase it because it would be really be messy if I keep all of them. So uh, uh, you can have this uh, first uh, projected here on this uh, xz, okay? So you can just make your graph to be projected here on xz and then see if there is a sun right over here, what's the, what's the projection, right? So this is number one, that's option number one. So you always make your sun or light or shadow and see what is the shadow of your graph to see where is the start point. So for this one, if I put the sun right over here, so then uh, then the, the shadow is going to make a, uh, what is it, a, a circle. But that's not the only option, right? So again, I'm not going to keep all of this because that would be really messy. And this is option number one. And then I go to the, option number two, no more, huh? So there's no more uh, eraser. So then this is going to be uh number two if you want to make the shadow to be really on oops uh to be on this uh yz plane okay so then your sun should be somewhere here and then your your projection is going to make some some cutting paraboloid shape huh so then then that would be the other option and then the last option is just really looking to the ground so right over here, the ground to be your projection. So your sun is sitting right over here and then you are just projecting on the ground, okay? So then your, your as you see, your uh, intersection thing is going to be something like a parabola shape. So then there are really three options. You can just really project it on XZ plane, project it on uh, XY plane, or project it on the YZ plane. Uh, do you know which one is easier? XZ. Why? I would think we could convert it to polar. And that Perfect. Would make it pretty. That's, yeah. that's exactly because it's simpler. Really, it's simpler to see, right? So if you see, you see the sun is sitting right over here and you make the shadow of this graph is just really making a shadow of really circle 
and then it's easier to see when it is a circle again it's easier to make it as you said in polar system to graph it in polar system okay so this this is really the way that you decide whether you want to start with the integration of xc or you start with the integration of xy or you want to say the y z is first and the x is the last one okay so whichever is easier to see or the shadow is easier so now i have made my shadow i'm just going to break uh, bring my shadow right in two dimensional graph to set the limits of integration but that was the xz plane huh so this is the xz plane and then i have uh, the radius of xz plane let's just really find out what's the limit y equals x squared plus z squared and then you have the y equals four so that tells you what's the radius am i right so radius is two so radius of this one is two and then you were right actually you were right to say we want to do the polar system why because i have circle circle is a lot easier to do in polar system so if that is a polar system you have seen the polar system x and y can i switch it to the x and z yes x equals r cosine and then z equals r sine and in this case x squared plus z squared is giving you the r squared is that fine so you could just really do it just any any circle in any of the x z plane or y z plane or x y plane so this is really what the uh, uh, what the polar equation says so then in this case, if I want to transfer everything, I have to start with the xz. So then this is the limits of integration in xz. And then I'm going to call it the d, which we said it later. And then, uh, then you have to take care of your y at the end, right? So then you have something inside. And uh, give me, for now, uh, what's the limits of integration if you want to transfer? Uh, what's the limits of integration if you want to transfer xz to be in polar system? What is the theta? rd rd theta mm -hmm. what's the limit of theta um from zero to two pi mm -hmm. and what is the r zero to two yes starting from the origin pointing out all the way to the uh two so i think i need to make it bigger because I have something to R D R D theta. Okay, so then what's the dy? The last one is the y, right? So we take care of x and z. We take care of x and z. The last one is the y. So if you want to write the y, I'm going to make it different color. Okay. So what it is? Y is increasing in this direction. So if you are moving along the y-axis, what do you hit first? what do you hit last base of the parabola um, which is n. r square right you hit first the paraboloid which is the r square and you hit at the end uh, y equal four the plane of y equals four mm -hmm. and then you do have something inside which is x square plus z square so that's just really whatever is given in the problem to you and then you can integrate it. Any question about setting the limits of integration? Do we need to add in, because we converted to polar, do we need to include another r in there? So mm -hmm. that square root of r squared would go to r, but then with the r it's, coming in from the conversion factor? Yeah, oh, got it, okay. Yes, we do. Okay, yeah. So any other question about the setting before I integrate them? Okay, so you have to keep this outer, you have to keep this one. 
is turned to do with the respect to the y. So r and then r is constant. You keep it there. So your integration is only one in terms of the y. Then you plug in r square, you plug in the four, and then it's ten for the r, then it's ten for the theta. So then I have uh, to plug in, this is going to be r square, and then four minus r to the uh, second. So this is going to be dr, this is going to be d theta, and then I have just really easy integration, right? So because this is 4r squared, this is 4r cubed divided by 3 after integration, r to the fourth is 5 divided by 5 after integration, 0 to 2. And since I have nothing to integrate in terms of the pi, uh, or sorry, in terms of the theta, I just multiply by 2 pi. We have done a few times, is that fine? So the two pi is for the last term, which is the d theta, but since there is nothing to integrate in terms of the theta, I can just say is n point minus the start point. Uh, I'm going to write down something over here. So Okay. And uh, then that's just really numbers. Okay, I don't care. Mm. What is the exact number? Any question here? And again, one more time, it's showing you, if you're supposed to keep it in the way that was originally, uh, means just everything in terms of x, y, z, that would be what, the, what your integral is, which is really hard to integrate, okay? If you keep it in x, y, uh, x, z coordinate. And then that's just what we have done, right? Really, we just make it in the r theta form and we got the number, okay? So that's what we need to do. Any question? So whatever you see over here as a graph is just really the graph of your region of integration. You do not see your F because that's in the fourth dimension, okay? This is in fourth dimension. This is really good, just I will say memory for us because we have started the course, I mean the chapter only in terms of uh, what we call find the volume, right? So the, the course, uh, the, sorry, chapter 15 is starting to find the volume. When I have started that thing, I just said, okay, let's just make this a surface, which is a function of uh, two variables. And then I just made the, uh, the base to be the region of integration. And then you just say integration of this uh, is giving me what we call volume. Right, this is how we start the volume. And then this is just really area if I do not have any integrand, right? So now it says, this is for double integration, right? So now it says for triple integration, it's giving you the, the volume too, right? So if you just have a triple integration and then you do not have any integrand, this is, sorry, this is BB. This is giving you the volume too. I'm telling you this, these two are the same, right? These two are exactly the same because this is the same as setting the limits of integration and say, if I'm moving from, uh, if I'm moving from the Z direction, this is Z bot and this is the Z top. So then you have the limits of integration from Z uh, equals zero to the z equals function of f of x, y, and then you just have to do the, the, the dv. When you write it down really the dv in a, the order that you're supposed to do this z and then dx dy, so then this piece really same as this one because you have upper limit f minus lower limit zero, so that's just really same as uh, f of x, y, d, a. 
So I can do the, the volume by using double integral if I have something inside to integrate. I can do it with the triple integration if I have nothing inside to integrate. It's the same. Does it make sense? Any question? Uh, for the rest of the, the problems that I have in this section is basically your application problems. We, I will say partially cover the application problems. And the reason is, is just nothing to do. I mean, I will provide the formula. You do have all your resources. It's nothing to do with the concept of the applications because what it says, mass is coming from the triple integration, mass is coming from the double integration, later is line integration, later. So it's only finding the mass by using this, all of the process. And then all I need to remember is always mass is the integration of the density. Mass is integration of the density. So that's nothing to do with us. All I need to know in this course is how to set the limits of integration. As far as the limits of integration is related to this course, which what we are trying to teach you, what we are trying to practice as much as we can, but mass is integration of the density. It depends on where we are and what, how many dimensions we have. So what do I mean? So if I give you a laminar things, like really two dimensional graph, like just really uh, something like a plate, and then the density function is just really two variables function. Then, uh, then the mass is going to be double integral. Why? Because my, my thing is two dimensional. And then if I give you something like just three dimensional, like just really solid, and then I ask you to find the mass, so, density is in three dimensions so you have to triple integral the, the density so again the only thing that i am going to teach you and you you're supposed to learn is how to set the limits of integration in either of these cases okay so then otherwise it's just really the formula to plug in everything and then that's not nothing new for us so for example this is just really what we will learn in chapter 16. So if you have a wire shape, which is a one dimensional, then, then your function, uh, I mean, your mass based on where, where it is, it could be triple integration, it could be double integration, because these are really paths in a space, or curve in a space, or curve in, in, in two dimensional. It could be either one. That's just really one thing that we covered in chapter 13. So then that's just different thing. So still, all I need to know is uh, integration of density is a mass. But that's kind of integration that we still don't know. This is just from the uh, next chapter 16. We still don't know how to do. Or if you have really something like a, a spherical shell, So means that's not solid anymore. Then still, if I'm looking for the mass, all I need to do is just integration of density is giving me the mass. But th these are really some kind of integration that we will learn in the, the next chapter, which is chapter 16. So it depends on where I am. If my uh, thing is just really two dimensional, so then, I have to do the double integration. Uh, sorry, I was trying to change the color. So if I am doing in two dimensional laminar thing, like floor, like just roof, so then it is just doing the double integration to give you the mass. If I just, you having something like a solid, and then you want to get the mass, you have to do the triple integration. And these are just really what we will learn in next, next, next chapter. So if you have something like a wire, which is one dimensional, so that's a line integration. If you have something like a shell, which is not a solid, so then that's just uh, uh, the surface integration. These are for next chapter. In general, I, what I want to say, always integration of density equals mass. So that's number one. 
And then number two, it depends on if, if you have had something in, uh, in your physics classes like moments of inertia, which is perfect. If you haven't had, I don't worry about the uh, concept, what it is, right? So I'm just really trying to uh, see how it's related to us because it's all integration, right? So if you have the moment of inertia in the YZ plane, so you just add X A over here. If you have it in X Z plane, you add Y over here. So these are the formulas that you will have, right? So that's just really how the formula is setting. So if it is a Y Z, X is there. If it's X Z, Y is there, X Z, Y is easy. So the only thing that I need to really know from this entire application problems is just how to set the limits of integration again, right? How to set the limits of integration. And then the other uh, concept or terminology from the uh, physics is the, what we call uh, center of the mass. Center of the mass when you have X by bar, bar and Z bar, is just going to be really whatever your moment of energy was in YZ divided by the mass. XZ divided by the mass, XZ divided the mass. So I, we don't expect you to know the formulas and then we don't expect you to know the, the, what is it, the concept, but I know most of us know what is the mass and what is the center of the mass. So what I need to really practice here as a calculus class is just how to set the limits of integration, okay? So let's see. As an example, this is a good example. Uh, this is the application problems. Again, I think your, your book has a, the whole uh, different, um, what is section for this one, but I don't want to make it that much hard or complicated. It's really how to set the limits of integration is all I need to know when, when we want to make the center of the mass. So for this problem, it asks us to get the center of mass. So I'm going to, rewrite my formula somewhere here to have them ready for plugging. So this is uh, when you have uh, integration, triple integration of x dv divided by, uh, I think the mass here is a constant. So let's just say, uh, rho, but rho is constant, it's fine. So rho dv, triple integration of y rho dv, triple integration of rho dv, triple integration of z dv, triple integration of rho dv, okay? So this is it. And that's the formula. And the rest of them is really how to graph it, how you set the limits of integration and which way you prefer to do first, okay? So obviously if you get the mass in first step, uh, this is just really repeating the same limits of, I mean, the limits of integration for none of these is going to be different than the others, okay? So it's really same thing. Uh, so if I set one of them, I'm done. Let's see, find the center of mass of a constant density. So means rho of x, y, and z is something. I don't know, it's just a cost. And then uh, that's bounded with the parabolic of x equals y square, plane of x equals z, plane of z equals zero, plane of x equals one. Okay, so let's start one by one. This is black. Blue is x equals y square. Where is x equals y square? If this is x, this is y, and this is z. So you have x equals y square. I'm, do, I'm going to do some changes here. Oopsie, sorry, sorry, sorry. Since it's x equals y square, uh, I think it's really nicer to see it in this way. Okay. So x equals y square is right there. Uh, 
and then since Z is missing, this is stretching in Z direction. Okay. Agree? Uh, we have to erase later some of them, but we make it in different color, at least we can see them. And then when it says x equals one, uh, this is right there. X equals one is right there. This is x equals one. This is x. Are you with me? Can I continue? Should I continue? No. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm with you. I don't know where anybody else is. Okay. Good. So then x equals z. So if this is a z, x equals z. If I use the blue, is not clear. So let's just say orange. Uh, so if I say x equals z, it's just really somewhere here, right? So it's right middle. This is x equals z. So if this is x equals z and is stretching in y direction, so it's cutting my graph right over here. This is a plane of x equals z. Do you see it? It's cutting my graph, x equals z. What is left? x equals zero. I don't have any problem with the x equals zero because it's just really my base. Just to highlight it, that would be enough. Okay. Is it clear? Where is it? If you are happy about the graph, you need to tell me which projection do you prefer to set the limits of integration? It's possible to do in all, but I think one of them is the most easiest one. Any idea? Uh, I would guess the xy plane, since it's just a parabola, right? Mm -hmm. This is square. So let's just make that. It doesn't matter, okay? So what it is is just really an xy plane. Um, it's just like this. And then it's stopping at x equals one. I make it in the same color. Oops, yeah, my color is not coming. I, I make it in the same color to know which part is transferring over here. So really that shaded base of the yellowish is just really the base, okay? Do you want to do type one or type two? Do you want to do this one in type one or type two? Uh, type two, so means you are moving from uh, x is to be constant. So x is to be constant means x is from zero to one, or type two, y to be constant, sorry. You said type two. 
so y to be constant so means you are moving from do we know what's those numbers x equals y square cut it with x equals one so that tells me y is from negative one to the positive one I agree anyone agree with this one is the shortest to the highest for the y so the next one is just make your uh, x limits since x is, the, is is going from left to the right so left is lower right is upper so left is lower left is lower lower is y square right is, is upper is one okay so this is for the dx the last ten is for the dz the last ten is for the dz so as i am moving along the z-axis as i am moving along the z-axis the first thing that i hit is the floor z equals zero the last thing that i hit is this one so i can just write i meant really z top and then z bottom so your z bottom is zero your z top is, is x okay and again since i'm looking for the mass all i need to do integration of uh, density to get the mass so that's is that's the main main step set the limits of integration then it doesn't matter what is my density density is constant okay i factor it out it has something to integrate so okay i i'll integrate it okay so main thing is really how you set the limits of integration or how you just really decide about the order of integration okay does it make sense anyone else any more yes okay move on uh, should i integrate so this is a constant k and I can factor it out. I think the integration is really straightforward. So if you integrate z, it's just really z plug in upper limit from lower limit, dx dy, and that gives you really one. Oops, sorry, x. That gives you x. Integration in terms of x is x squared divided by 2. You plug in y squared and 1. And then next term is uh, for the y. So this is going to be, I don't know, uh, 1 half minus y to the fourth divided by 2 and then you integrate in terms of the y. Okay. Mm, this is one half y minus y to the fifth divided by 10 from negative one to the one. So that is odd, huh? If it's the odd function, it's going to be twice of half minus one ten. So it's ten. You can plug in one and negative one, okay? So ten minus two is eight divided by two. Eight, ten minus two. Oh, sorry. Two divided by five. Five minus one is four ten. So it's 810, um, 4 over 5 of k. OK, so that's mass. I will find one of them. I don't have to get all of them because the process is the same, OK? 
So what do I mean by one of them? For example, if I want to get the X bar, uh, is j, k is constant density. Yeah, exactly. So if I want to get the X bar, it should be the triple integration of uh, X and then rho and then dV divided by whatever is the mass, right? So what does it mean? The top of this integration has exactly same limits, same limits. It's really same solid, right? So it doesn't change the solid. So I do have X and then I do have K and then I do need to integrate one more time, okay? So what is it? DZ dy DX. So every process is going to be the same except in the last step, I have had no integrand. It was just really k because that was mass. This time I have x plus the k because of this x. And then, then I have to divide by uh, mass, which is 4, 5k. And then k cancel out. Sorry, this is k. The k cancel out. Okay, but the, the, top, the top you need to integrate again to see what it is, okay? That's what we call moment of inertia in terms of YZ, if you want to call it. And then I just do one of them, okay? Because they are really same thing, except the integrand will be this time X. In terms of the Z still is Z, you plug in zero, we plug in X, next term is um, X is first, Y is last. So next term is X, next term is the Y. So that gives you X square to integrate this time. In terms of X is going to be X cubed divided by three from Y square to the one. The last term is uh, dy. So this is going to be um, one third minus y to the six divided by three of dy. So one third is y third, y to the seven divided by three, plug in negative one to the one. Sorry, I did that keep the k because it cancel out by the top. You could just really cancel right over here or you just, cancel it after calculation. That's why I didn't write it. Uh, 21. Seven times three is 21, right? So that is going to be 21 minus three, no, no. Uh, seven minus three. So that tells you your X bar is the top you got K 12 divided by 21. The bottom one you got the mass, which was four divided by five K. So K by K cancel out. So it's 12 divided by 21, five divided by four. So 15 divided by 21. Is it okay? It was just really calculation. Main thing that I'm really trying to say, uh, you need to set is right over here, which is the limits of integration. Whenever you have done the first limits of integration, everything is going to be the same, except you do have different integrand because of this formula, right? Because of this formula, for the first one you have X to integrate, for the second one you have Y, for the third one you have a Z. 
if you know a little bit about the physics, if you know about the center of the mass, can you tell me uh, which of this is going to be zero? Is it X bar or Y bar or Z bar? One of these values is zero based on the graph is symmetrical. Do you know which one is zero? I mean, you can go ahead and compute it, but you will see, yes, exactly why. You will see because this graph is symmetrical, the center of mass is really, yes, exactly, that's true. Because this graph is symmetrical, so your, your center of mass is sitting on your x-axis. Does it make sense? It's sitting on the x-axis, that's why your y bar, you can compute it, but it will be zero. So then you don't need to really compute it. Y bar will be zero. Okay, so anyway, that's just really setting the limits of integration. All the steps are here, okay? So I did not skip any steps, but they are all here too. So you can just go ahead. That was the mass that we got. And then it's just really what you guessed correctly. The y prime, y bar is zero. Yes, it is zero because it's symmetrical in terms of the x-axis. So then it's getting the other one. And then you plug in. It's getting the other one and you plug in. Okay, so I'm not going to do all of them. It's just really as you expect, this is one of them. This is the other two that you can just find, find with the numbers, but all the steps are here, okay? So what is the main thing that you need to practice is really one more time, set the limits of integration. Otherwise you will be fine. Uh, why five over seven? Uh, did I get five over seven? What did I get? Okay, okay, I got it. Mm, yeah, we did not simplify exactly. I doubt I thought I made this. This is five over seven. Oh, five over seven. I made it the other way. Okay. Make sense? And again, in all of the other books, this is a different section. I don't, I'm not sure whether yours is different section. And then I don't think I'm going to spend time to make it in different section because all I need to practice is set the limits of integration and know integration of density is the mass. Okay. But since this is always open uh, for your at least test for the rest of semester, so you don't have to worry about the formula sheet. Okay. I'm going to give you a break for now and then move it to the new, new section. So let's just say if I want to have a seven minutes break, about seven to six minutes break, eight minutes breaks is 2.14. Huh? So let's come back at 2.14. Let's come back at 2.14. I know there are many things that I did not update on your grade book but I will, okay? And then 5.6 is the one that I won't cover because it's really same thing, which is the moment of inertia and then the density. And why is the density in this form? I'm not worried about it. I just need the formula to get the center of the mass. This is for two dimensional, so it's easier.
Okay, ready? Are you ready? Raise your hand or just say yes if you are ready. Move yes. Two. Three. Four, five, okay, perfect, thank you. And uh, this is just really same as what we have done before the break is just really application section. We don't cover it completely, why? Because it's not really different section. It's just really set the limits of integration and then you are done. We have done in triple integration, which is harder. This is for double integration, which is easier. And then if you remember in calculus 2, you've seen actually what is the center of mass equation. It was different format because there we didn't know what is the, uh, uh, what is the double integral, how you set it in double integral. Here is just easier because in, uh, that was x squared divided by 2 inside the integration, but 
that was just really integration of X, if you remember. So if you don't remember, don't worry about it. And then uh, that's just really same format. If you are looking for X bar for the center of the mass, your top equation has the X inside the integrand. If you're looking for the Y bar, your uh, top equation or top of your, your fraction has the Y inside the integrand, but your denominator is just really always, again, mass is always double integral of the density if you are working in such a this laminar or two-dimensional graph. But if you have triple integration, so then you have a solid, uh, three-dimensional solid, and then it depends on what is the dimension of your, your uh, what is thing, you can just have single, double, or triple integration. But the format is the same thing. I'll try one more, and then we can just really move to the, the new section. So one more time, it's, it's asked us to get the center of mass. This time is just really a two-dimensional. How do I know it's a two-dimensional? Usually, they, they use the word lamina. Lamina word means really that's a, something like a laminate, and it's two-dimensional. And then the density function is this time is not constant, it's given to me. And that's just how you set the limits of integration because it says a triangle shape. So this is going to be uh, a triangle shape. It is at the origin, it is at the one, and it is the two. So this is the shape. Okay, and then the limits of integration is coming from this graph. Okay, and then that's just your integrand, the row is given to you. So one more time, mass is always double integration of the density function. So this is a triangle and it's easily uh, you can just set it in type one or type two, it doesn't matter. Let's write what is the equation of this. Um, left. Is it true? Right round, huh? I go from here down negative two. Am I right? Yes, huh? So the, then setting the limits of integration, is it possible to do type one or type two? It doesn't matter because that's a triangle. If I go from zero to one for the X, then the dy is going to be uh, uh, from here to the here. So which is from zero to the minus two X plus two. And then since it's a, a given row, so you have to integrate uh, from one plus three X plus Y. And then it's just integration from zero to one. This is just really uh, in terms of the Y. So it's Y plus three X Y plus Y squared divided by two plug in from zero to negative two X plus two, three X. Um, it's a long computation, am I right? Um, that's minus 2x plus 2. And then minus 2x plus 2. And then minus 2x plus 2. And it's just a really long computation. I mean, numbers are just big. So uh, this is minus two x squared divided by two. This is two x. This is uh, minus six x cubed divided by three. This is plus six x 
to the second divide by two. And this is minus two x plus two cubed divided by three because of negative two. Uh, you have to divide one more time by two. Because of this negative two. And then you plug in your value to be zero. I don't think it changes anything. You plug in the value to be one, okay? So I'm going to copy the number from here. I hope the numbers is, is there. It's eight divided by three. Okay. And this is eight divided by three. So that's a mass. And then if I want to get the X bar, I have to get the double integration of X rho dA divided by the mass. So integration is really same limits of integration. And then X rho is one plus three X plus Y and then DX and then, sorry, DY and then DX. So again, process is the same, only I have different integrand, right? So this is X is different. I think that's too light, I shouldn't use that color. So this is going to be X integration in terms of Y, 3X squared integration in terms of Y, and then X integration in terms of Y when I distribute. And then I plug in zero to minus two X, and the next term is for the X. And that's X two minus two X, 3x square, 2 minus 2x, x half, 2 minus 2x to the second. Is 2x to the second divided by 2, x square, so it's cubed divided by 3, and 6x square to the second, so it's x cubed divided by three, and minus six x cubed, so it's four divided by four, and that's that's a tough one, huh? I have to distribute. Can I leave this integration for yourself? Sorry, this is a long one. Do you mind if I leave this one? Two times two for eight x. Mm. Minus four x square. So it's four x square divided by two, x cubed divided by three, x four divided by four. And again, since I have the number, I'm going to see what's the number on the bottom. Mm, this is a y. The x is 3, 8, huh? Yeah, the x is 3, 8. So the next part is uh, 3 over 8 divided by mass. Uh, which was 8 divided by 3. And then it has the y bar is y rho xy 
da divided by mass and that's just really same limits of integration exactly y times what was it one plus three x plus y divide x and again i'm going to see what's the calculation because that takes time 11 divided by 16. Oh, sorry, the numbers are giving to, so let me just make this one correct. The numbers is, I can't trust my number, sorry. What is giving to me in this calculation is really last answer of dividing this number. Uh, dividing this number by your mass. Uh, is three over eight. Sorry, we don't know what standard number is. So center of mass or centroid, center of mass or centroid is a point. And the calculation is all here, okay? So all of the calculation is here and that's it. Okay, so I'm not going to continue this one because this is just really, more double integration, triple integration, setting the limits of integration. So this is what I'm going to stop and then move it to the new new section. If you have any question, any concern, any comment about this type of centroid or application problems. Can I move on? Okay, uh, last one actually, uh, the, this is the last section of this chapter, right? So then the rest of them is just really practicing, practicing and practicing. So what it is, again, to make my job easier. I mean, it's just really to find a way to make the integration easier uh, when you set the limits of integration and you start to integrate, you don't want to get any complicated methods like you, what you have learned in calculus too. You want to do just really use substitution at most, right? And then you're done, right? So then we have to move this uh, to the new coordinate system. One solution to make my job easier for integration was polar system, when we have circular one. But polar is two dimensional, right? So how about the triple integration if I want to do it in the new coordinate system to be easier, then this is just really two more ways, right? So 15.71 is cylindrical coordinate. The other one is the spherical coordinate. So two coordinate coordinate system, two more, sorry, coordinate system to find easier integration, right? I will tell you, you have done cylindrical coordinate, but you didn't know what you are doing is cylindrical coordinate. So why you have done cylindrical coordinate without knowing? So cylindrical coordinate is nothing new. You have done it already in cylindrical coordinate because when you were trying to do this problem, uh, before the mass, problem. Uh, when you were trying to do this problem right over here and you said I just want to move this one to the circle form because I can just move the circle in the uh, polar system a lot easier. So whenever you have done such a this process means you have a triple integration but you have done it in polar system. So basically means you have had R and theta for the polar and then you still have a third dimension in any way, okay? So this means you are doing cylindrical coordinate. So polar is for two dimensional 
cylindrical is a polar in three dimension. Okay, so cylindrical coordinate is going to be really same as polar, only it has the third dimension because polar has X and Y, R and theta, but it doesn't have the Z. So you keep the Z to be Z and that's what we call cylindrical coordinate. Why it's called cylindrical coordinate? You will see it in an example. So you, I will just show you an example that's just telling why we call this one cylindrical coordinate. So remember, cylindrical coordinate is a new coordinate system, but we've seen it before. It does have three dimensions, three variables of R, theta, and Z. And then the R and theta is really the same as what you've seen it in polar. So means the distance from the origin is called R in two dimensional. The angle with the positive of the x-axis is going to be your theta. So R and theta is really the same as polar. You keep the Z to be Z. You keep the Z to be the height to be Z. So then this is going to be what we call cylindrical coordinate. So one more time, cylindrical coordinate is polar in three dimension, polar plus Z, okay? So it does not have any new formula. It's really same formula. X is R cosine, Y is R sine, Z equals zero, R squared is X squared plus Y squared, and all of the formulas stays exactly the same, but the coordinate again is three dimensional. Right, so coordinate is three dimensional because it does have three of them. So then I, from now on, I have to be careful about the exactly wording in my problem because you might have equation in cylindrical coordinate different than in uh, spherical coordinate, different than in rectangular coordinate. So then I have to really be careful which one is asking us. For this one, it says find the cylindrical form if rectangular form is given. So then I know. If this is a rectangular form, first one is X, the second one is Y, the last one is Z. But if it was spherical, it was different, right? So if it was cylindrical, it was different. Since this point is given in a cylindrical coordinate, sorry, in rectangular coordinate is really what, whatever we call X, Y, and Z. But then it asks us to transfer it to the, to the R and theta and Z form. Again, it's really something that we've seen it in the previous calculus classes. So it's just really X equals R. When I'm moving from the X, Y coordinate to the R theta coordinate in polar, we just say R squared is X squared plus Y squared. So this is R squared equals uh, three squared plus negative three squared. So this is going to be three rad two, number one. And then what is the other one? The angle is tan inverse of y divided by x. So it's tan inverse of uh, y is negative three divided by three. So tan inverse of negative one. You remember this one, we have had it in previous course. He asked you, okay, make sure you graph your point because that tells you which coordinate because there are always two solutions for that, right? Since this is a one, two, three of them, one, two, three of them. So then I know it's going to be here, right? So this is the theta. So I know it's the fourth quadrant version. It's not wrong if you just call it this way. Mm. That's true too. So what is it? Seven pi over four. Okay, so either one is fine. Right? Fine, so then I can just write yes. That was just radius first, angle next, the order matter, right? So that's ordered pair. So then this is just really triple. So it's really Z the same thing. Or I could write the positive and this either one, either one is fine, okay? Make sense?
move on. Okay, so this is right over here and we have that. Okay, so then as I said, this is the, ex the, the example that says why we call this one cylindrical coordinate because this is the equation of cylinder in cylindrical coordinate and is the easiest way to write the cylinder equation, right? So if it says R equals constant to cylindrical coordinate, that gives you a cylinder. R equals constant is in cylindrical coordinate so just again, be careful about the wording. If it says all equals constant in polar, that gives you circle with the radius of C. If it says all equals C in, uh, what is, is cylindrical, that gives you a cylinder. Okay, so this is just really the reason that we call this one cylindrical coordinate because there is this way to write the cylinder equation. So uh, that's just really different if you go to the, the next one, which is the spherical coordinate. So this is a good question. What would be the surface in cylindrical coordinate? What would be the surface in cylindrical coordinate if your Z and the radius are equal? Z equals R. What's the corresponding graph or surface in spherical coordinate? Oh, sorry. Uh, what would be the graph or surface if you have uh, the cylindrical equation of Z equals R? Any idea? So for example, if Z equals zero, R equals zero. Exactly, right? So if z equals 1, r equals 1. So if z equals 1, r equals 1. If z equals 2, r equals 2. If z equals 2, r equals 2. Do you see? Do you see the cone? So as your r is increasing, your z is increasing, as your z is increasing, your R is increasing. Is it the two pieces cone? Yes, it is, because it could go to the negative piece too. Make sense? So that's the equation of cone. And instead of Z equals, uh, what is it? Uh, square root of X squared plus Y squared. Now simply Z is equals R, so that's easier for integration. Right, so this is easier to integrate, okay? And that it was a cone. As far as the type of integration, again, I'm not worried about, I don't want to make it that much complicated. It depends on which way is easier to see, to project, to set the limits of integration, okay? So I don't worry which one you call it type one or type two, or which one is the most common one. Uh, yes, the most common one, as I said, we always start with the theta but I don't worry about these two. Whichever is easier, we just do that one, okay? So I'm not worried about that. But the only thing that I need to be careful, since this is kind of polar, still it has the same extra factor. So still X is R cosine, still R, uh, Y is R sine, still Z is sitting as Z, but it's just really the same Jacobian or extra factor. If you just write it to the polar, you add the R, you write it in cylindrical, you add the R. Okay, so that's just really same rule because basically it's polar. It does have the, only the Z extra. So this is just what we, what we do, right? So in order to write it in cylindrical coordinate, you kept X as R cosine, Y as R sine, but you don't touch your Z. You leave the Z as it is. So you remember if you have a DV, it's not really DZ, DR, D theta. It does have that extra factor of R. And again, it's nothing new because it's really what we do in polar, only we have the triple or we have the DZ extra than 
the two-dimensional Oran theta, okay? Where do we prefer to use the cylindrical coordinate? Obviously, if we have a cylinder, right? So if we have a cylinder, we prefer to use a cylindrical coordinate because it's, it looks easier, it looks nicer, it looks so shorter. And then if you have any type of x squared plus y squared, okay? This is the first example. Okay, I'm happy at least it doesn't have the graph. We can start from the blank and graph it. So how many minutes do I have? I have a little bit, huh? I have a little bit so I can do this problem. Should I wait for anyone to write anything? Or let's... Any question, anything? Are you ready to make the graph? Okay. So, first one, cylinder. Okay, with the radius of the one. The next one is the plane of z equals four. Then paraboloid, the paraboloid upside down. Okay, so I make it maybe this color. Okay, paraboloid upside down. What it says, above the paraboloid, above the paraboloid, below that plane, okay? And then uh, inside the cylinder. So this is how it is. So the part that I shaded, that's just the volume or the solid that you are supposed to integrate away. So if you want to imagine where it is, just really look at to the, uh, the bottle of wine. The bottom part of the bottle of wine is always like that. So most of the bottle wine is just having that little uh, curvy shape at the bottom. And it just seems the goal is to get the, how much is the wine inside that uh, bottle, okay? So how do I start? Where do I start? Any idea? Where do you start? X, Y plane? X, Y plane means this is just the projection. So this is just the projection on X, Y plane, which is just a circle with the radius of one. Uh, circle with the radius of the one. So I can set the limits of integration for this one because that's really the same thing that we have done a few times. The whole entire graph is going from zero to two pi unless the problem says making half then radius is going to be from zero to one. Then the Jacobian for polar, the extra factor for polar is sitting there. So then the only thing left is just the DZ, right? So let me make it maybe darker. So what is the DZ? If I'm moving along the Z axis, if I'm moving along the Z axis, the start point is right over here. Yes, all the way to the four. So if I call it again, uh, this is the bot, the uh, equation of the parabola, parabolic, sorry. And then this is the Z top, and that was equals four. So you're starting from z bot which is one minus r square ending by z top which is z equals four and i do i do have something to integrate 
I have to transfer the whole thing. So k is a constant. I factor it out. Square root of x square plus y square, which is r square. Is it fine to integrate? Move on. Okay, so I have a little bit time to integrate. Let's just integrate this one. Zero to two pi does not change anything because there is nothing in terms of that. So the r one from out of radical one from the inside is r square, and then if I integrate the z is going to be from one minus r square to the four. So dr still is there, d theta still is there. Fine? Is it fine? Move on. One more yes. Okay. So then I have, thank you. Then I have uh, R square out, plug in four, upper limit minus lower limit. And now is the term for the DR and the theta is the last one. Again, I'm not worried about the theta because there is nothing to integrate. I can just write it out. So all, all I need to take care of my R. So this is a three minus R square, which I fact, I mean, I distribute R inside. So equal four, uh, sorry, square, and then this is four. So then integration is r cubed divided by three minus r to the fifth divided by five. So this is it, right? Five minus one is four. Okay, I'm going to stop here, but as you see, the cylindrical coordinate is really short, and then the, the other one is a spherical coordinate. I don't call cylindrical coordinate new uh, lecture uh, because it's really polar when you add the third dimension of the Z, but it's still the biggest thing, I mean, just the confusion for students or the setting the limits is just to see the picture. So that's why for every single graph, I plug in from the beginning, I start to just graph it from the beginning. We have done many of these examples, okay? So this is just really what we need to practice and practice and practice to graph, okay? So if I see the graph, I see the limits. If I see the limits, I'm done, right? So that's just really simple integration. But as I said, I'm going to stop here, which is just doing the cylindrical coordinate. And then uh, we can just next time try to do spherical coordinate, okay? Any question for me? You said you were going to extend the homework, right? That's a good thing. Uh, let's see if we have a little bit time. How much we can extend it, huh? Can you write on the chat? I have to find the chat separately. Okay. So this is you. Mm. Okay, so do you the for how many section is on April six? And then the next one is April thirteen. Six plus seven is thirteen. Okay. Mm. Uh, 
How many? Let's just make it on Wednesday. Is that fine? I agree. Can I? Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday works good. Uh, because you know there are the other two sections of this chapter which is coming. So this is 15.3, four and five, which goes to the Wednesday, six and seven is just the 30, okay? So this is, where is this it? Update. Yep, anything else? Any other I questions? had a question about the midterm. Um, you know how I know you and John were talking about it at the beginning of class, how um, you're giving the option to redo the ones that we got wrong. Um, I was just wondering when those need to be submitted by. No, 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 no. That was a different way. Okay. okay. Uh, we just, uh, so the, the main thing is how do I uh, grade those work, okay? So the assumption is you got whatever grade is on the, my math lab. So then that's just on my math lab. And then, uh, then to increase or to help you, uh, I will just go to your work and check what you have done in your uh, work when you submitted on Blackboard. So if you just lost the points in the my math lab, and then you did uh, most of the um, steps correctly in your work. So then I will give you partial credit. That's just what I said. Does it make sense? Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Professor, uh -huh. um, how are we taking the quiz again? Uh, the quiz is just really limited time. So it's really like this, similar to what you have done during the class time, it's just really five to 10 minutes quiz, okay? So I will post a problem uh, right on the blackboard. It will be available at the end of our class time. So for example, if the class time is ending by uh, 2.50, so we just uh, make the quiz on the blackboard on week number 11 available at 2.30 on Wednesday. And then it will be closed on 3.30. So then as soon as the class has finished, you can just go and try those, that one problem. And then as you do your group work, as you do any of your uh, other assignment to blackboard, you just scan and upload for me that's only problem and then i'll grade it okay so we have like an and hour professor uh, so, so we have sorry, hour. Go ahead. uh sorry uh, i think uh so mm, the last word can you repeat it um so we're, we have like a time to get finish the it. file finish it and then scan it and then send it in yeah before three thirty. So it's approximately treated because it's not really that many problems. Usually it's one problem, you have to set it to a few coordinate systems. And then we can start it after class ends. It's just after, whenever I finish, yeah. Okay, got it. Thank you. What was the other question? Uh, what section will the quiz be covering? Uh, I will make it by uh, the end of 15.5. Okay. Thank you, you know, because they are connected, I can't say anything like that because they are really, if I give you something in just 15.2 and 3 means type 1, type 2 integration, but you prefer to do it in triple integration, you can do it, right? You can do it volume in double integration, you can do volume in triple integration, you can do it in XY coordinate system, you can do it type 1, type 2, then you can do it in cylindrical coordinate system. So I can't say the direct sections, but I'm, I expect you to really do knows uh, by 15.5. Any Thank other you. question? You're welcome. No? Okay, see, so you don't have any question. Have a great day and stay safe at your home. 
If you have had any concern, any question, you have to email me then, uh, especially about if you think something is complaining about the test, uh, you must email me, okay? So about the number of problems, uh, about uh, whatever uh, you have had a hard time, you think you got better in your work, so you want to specifically, okay, look at this problem I've done correctly in the work, but I got the wrong number on, my MATLAB, okay? I will take a look at every single problem, especially if you send me an email carefully. So that helps me. Thank you. Okay, have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, Professor. You're welcome, bye. Thank you.